Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. In today's lesson, we'll see how we can manage grid lines and levels so that you can see them consistently across all your views. For example, if I go now to a level plan and isolate the grid lines category, you can see now some of them are shorter, some of them are longer, what if I want to have a quick way to make them have the same length and I want to see them that way in all of my views in the project. Similarly, if I go to make a new elevation now, maybe over here, you can see that sometimes you have grid lines that have different lengths in the model. So those are shorter, but those below are longer. We also need a way to quickly get them to the same length and show them in the same way across all our views. Let's see how we can do that now. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now and get tutorials like this every single day. All right, so for this lesson, what you need to do is something called a scope box. It's a Revit tool dedicated to help you manage views and data elements like levels and grids more easily. Let's draw one scope box now. We can go to the plan view, go to the view tab, and activate scope box. You cannot draw the scope box as big as you want it to be. For now, I want to have all my levels and grids to cover the whole extent of my building. That's why I will draw one scope box now, like this, big enough to cover the whole house. It looks like just a rectangle in plan view, a 2D element. But if you go now to the 3D view, you can see now the box is actually 3D. Let's go to this front view and also make it deep enough to cover the whole extent of the building below and above ground. Something like this. We can now return to a level view, select one of the grid lines, right click, get all instances in the entire project. And now under their properties, you can see this line here will allow you to specify a scope box for all of them. Let's pick from here the one we just created. We didn't rename it, so the name is still scope box number one. Apply that now. And straight away, you see some things getting better. Our grid lines have extended themselves to cover the whole length and width of this scope box, just like we wanted. Let's do the same now for levels. I will go back to the new elevation we created just now. Get one level now, right click, select all in the entire project. And just like with grid lines, under properties, you also have this line here to assign those levels to the same scope box. Let's get them to the same one, scope box number one, and apply. And straight away, you will see now that they have now the same length and the same extent. We no longer have to manually drag the endpoints to align them up in a very slow way. And the good thing is, if I go to any other elevations, my levels will always share the same extent. Unless I choose to override that myself. As you can see here, those levels, they share the same scope box, number one there. But somehow they still vary in length in this elevation. This is because some of them had taken 2D overrides in this view. If I now select this one, for example, I can see there's a circular point right there showing the 3D extent of this level. Other levels sharing the same scope box, they also have their 3D extents stopping at the same point where the scope box ends. You can see that one there as well. And this one here below as well. What I don't have in common is a 2D extent override in this view. When I select this one, for example, there is this other little blue point and that shows the 2D extent of this level. You can make it longer or shorter. The other two bigger blue points on the left, they only show that this level line is split. I can do the same up here for this one. Use this split line or add elbow icon there to achieve the same result. Anyway, if you didn't choose to override your level lines this way, then they will always stop at the same point defined by your scope box. That certainly happens to your grid lines. And if you at some point want to make this length a bit less, you can always change the scope box to make that happen quickly. Much quicker than trying to change those individual grid lines yourself. Now, here's one bonus tip. If I go back to level one now, 
and copy the script line to the right. Make it grid line number 8. If I now go back to that elevation, that new grid line is now showing up there. But if I now return to the level view and rotate this by a very small angle, maybe 1 degree this way. When I return to that same elevation before, that grid line won't show up anymore. So when you do this kind of manipulation, make sure that the grid lines you want to see still comes perpendicular to the view you are trying to show it in. In this case, this grid line number 8 is not coming perpendicular to the cut plane of my elevation view, which is that blue line down here. This degree, as long as at not 90 degrees, you will not see this grid line in this view. Alright, if you enjoyed this tutorial, subscribe now to get more like this every single day. For now, have a good day and I'll see you in the next lesson.